Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to our new topic, Magnetic Effect of an Electric Current. In the first topic of Form 2, we discussed magnetism and we said magnetism is the study of magnets where we discussed magnets and how to magnetize materials. One of the most important method of magnetizing materials that we discussed is using electric current by inserting a magnetic material inside a solenoid which carries direct current and in that process the material got magnetized. Now in this lesson we are going to discuss the magnetic effect of an electric current and what we are going to realize here is that for every conductor carrying current there is a magnetic field around it and then later we are going to discuss how a conductor carrying current which has a magnetic field around it produce a force and in this topic we are going to discuss very important electric gadgets like an electric bell electric motors microphones and loudspeakers my name is albert i hope you will enjoy the lesson and the topic in general by the end of this lesson i expect you to be able to describe the introductory part of magnetic effect of an electric current then discuss the hans Ofsted experiment then later define Ofsted the ampere swimming rule of determining the direction of magnetic field around a conductor which is carrying current so entirely in this topic we are going to study the magnetic field which is produced due to the flow of an electric current then later we are going to discuss some of the applications of this effect what you need to know is that whenever you have a conductor this is a conductor here which is carrying current in that direction around this conductor there is always a magnetic field around it there is a magnetic field around it and remember what we discussed in magnetism about magnetic field those properties of magnetic field the field line does not intersect they form a complete loop from north pole to south pole and so on and so forth so the field which will be produced on this wire should also obey those characteristics of the magnetic field lines so another thing when this field or when this magnetic field is going to interact now with the current which produced it it's going to produce a force now this force which is produced we're going to discuss later how to identify the direction of this force since force is a vector quantity so the pioneer of this topic is a professor in physics a classical professor called hans Ørsted, and the key statement which will guide you from the beginning to the end of this topic is that in every current carrying conductor there is always a magnetic field around it so whenever you look at a wire or a conductor which is carrying current just you have to see a magnetic field around it even if you can't see physically you have to know that in that conductor there's a magnetic field around it and that's what we're going to discuss here how to identify the direction of that magnetic field then later how to identify the force which is being produced and then we're going to see some of their applications so since we have said that in every conductor carrying current there's a magnetic field around it now our first role will be identifying the direction of this magnetic field and we have four ways in which we can identify this and the first one is the Ørsted experiment then two we are going to use the ampere swimming rule three we are going to use the framing is right hand grip rule for a conductor carrying current then later we will discuss the maxwell's corkscrew rule so the hands arrested this experiment is a set on this screen here and what you do you just set your experiment like this where you have a battery which will produce a direct current now this current will be moving in this direction like this through the row start and then it will meet the compass needle this is the compass needle one this is a compass needle the first one a then we have a, another compass needle here this is also another compass needle b but the compass needle one is above the wire this one is above the wire and then this one the, the one with b is below the wire now the reason why this one is above the wire is because we cannot see this wire on top of it 
but the one which is below we can still see a wire passing on top of this compass needle so this one is placed above then this one is placed below and now what you do you switch on your switch and then observe what happened to this compass needle remember a compass needle has a magnet in inside it and it deflects easily whenever there's a magnetic field around it so now when you observe we are going to observe that so remember a compass needle has north pole where it is colored and south pole where there's no color and in this case this north pole and south pole compass needle a is above the wire this one is below the wire now when you switch on the switch what will happen the compass needle which is above the north pole will point downward like in this case here so this one the one which is above it will point downward and then the one which is below in this case will deflect upward like that so here if i can draw an elaborate diagram assuming that wire was passing on a cardboard like this one here where this wire coming like that and then moving to the other side of this cardboard so if it was passing through a cardboard and moving out like this with the direction of current in this direction like that remember here current was moving in that direction now above the compass needle which is above will be moving in this direction it will move in that direction it will move down like in this case here then the compass needle which is below will move below the compass needle like that so in this case as you can see it forms a complete loop so below it's moving up and then above here it's moving down so this is down and then this is it's moving up so when it is moving down on one side and the other side the, the, the lower side is moving up in this case if you can join them they can form a complete loop and that one will show the direction of the magnetic field along this wire so the direction of deflection of the compass needle can be predicted by ampere swimming rule which states that if one imagines swimming along a conductor in the direction of electric current and facing in the compass needle then the north pole of the needle will be deflected towards the swimmer's left hand so this rule needs you to imagine and you have to imagine that so in this case if we have a wire here i want to draw a swimmer and a wire so we have a wire this is the wire that is carrying current now this wire is carrying current in this direction this is the direction of current and then we have the above the wire and below the wire this is above the wire and this side is below the wire so if we have a swimmer who is on top of this wire i'm going to draw a swimmer here with the head of the swimmer there like that so this is the swimmer then this swimmer has two hands remember when you are swimming you have to spread your hands this swimmer has a left hand with that direction like that and then he has the right hand in this direction like that so if he is swimming above this wire which is carrying current in the same direction where he is swimming to now if you have a compass needle below this swimmer i'm going to draw a compass needle with a north pole and south pole so if you have a compass needle like this one here this compass needle has the arrow which is north pole colored this north pole and south pole and this needle is below the conductor where the swimmer is swimming on top so according to this rule when this swimmer is swimming in the same direction with current and there's a compass needle below this swimmer or below this wire below the wire the compass needle will deflect the swimmer's left hand so it means below this wire this compass needle will move in this direction like that and then the south pole will be here so when this needle is placed below and it will deflect in a direction like the needle points in the direction of the left hand of the swimmer therefore it means if you have a compass needle on top of this swimmer now this one is in below 
if it's on top of the swimmer from what we saw on the Olsted experiment, then in this case, the canvas needle is going to face uh, on the right hand side. If it's above, it's going to face on the right hand side like this. This when we have the canvas needle above the swimmer. So in this case, if you have a canvas needle on top of the swimmer, the north pole is going to face down and then the south pole is facing up. In this case, when you have it below, the north pole is facing up where the left hand side of the swimmer is and then the south pole is facing with the right hand side. When you have it above, the, the, the north pole is facing to the right hand side and the south pole is facing the left hand side. Now, I want to draw this one in a more elaborate way, so that you conceptualize what we are saying here. If you have uh, this conductor, same, same conductor, passing through a cardboard, I want to draw a cardboard here. This is our cardboard, like that. Then we have the same, same conductor, which is moving from this side here, like that, and then penetrating through the cardboard to the other side like that. Penetrating to the other side like that. And then the current is moving in the same direction like that. So in this case, if the swimmer is above here, I want us to use this cardboard so that we see how that magnetic field will be distributed. So if the swimmer is above here, left hand is on this side here. This is the left hand of the swimmer. Left. Then this is the right hand of the swimmer, right hand. So in this case, if you have a compass needle below this swimmer, the compass needle or the compass needle will point in this direction. It will point on to the left hand side like that, and then you will get out on the other end below the wire. Then now above the wire, I've said above the wire, this. Uh, Compass needle will point in the right hand side of the swimmer. So above this wire, this is above the wire, the compass needle will point on the right hand side like this. Below it's pointing to the left, above it's pointing to the right. Remember, right hand side is below here. This is the right hand side, then this is the left hand side. So below it's facing left, above it's facing right hand side, and the current is moving in this direction. So in this case, if we can draw a complete loop now, it can be above is moving uh, like this. Let me draw using a very different ink here. So if we draw a complete loop, it will be like this. This field will be moving like that. Then when it reaches below, it will move in that direction like that in a complete loop. And then it will join this one here and it will be moving in that direction or through. So through this one, we have determined or we have used the ampere swimming rule to determine the direction of magnetic field along a wire carrying current. And this rule states that if one imagines swimming along a conductor in the direction of current and facing the compass needle, then the north pole of the needle will face or will deflect toward the swimmer's left hand. Then automatically, the south pole will deflect toward the swimmer's right hand hand. So we're going to do a few examples to determine the direction of magnetic field along a conductor carrying current using Ampere swimming rule. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss more examples of determining the direction of magnetic field along a conductor carrying current using Ampere swimming rule.